What I wanted to do now is just talk a little bit about the business plan itself. So literally talk about the actual document that we need to write um, and how we would put this together and the sort of things we need to consider when we're actually writing a business plan. Now remember that a business plan is a really critical tool for us being able to um, gain access to external funding and support to grow and develop our business. Um, it's also important for us being able to gain access to um, strategic partners that might be relevant for us actually being able to grow our business. And so having an effective business plan, having a plan that really um, provides a clear, concise picture of the operating landscape um, around the organisation is a really important um, you know, document for the organisation to have. And so I just want to say a few words about the actual business plan itself. The business plan is a um, written document that we use to describe what it is that we're trying to achieve as an organisation. Um, so it has certainly um, very important um, functional uses in terms of containing data relevant to the strategy and direction of the organisation. But it also has really important symbolic benefits. Um, and when I talk about symbolic benefits, what I'm saying here is that the symbolism attached with having this means that we're seen as being a serious business venture, that we're actually, we've put pen to paper and it's no longer just an idea, it's something that we're actually trying to do as an organisation. So the business plan is a really important document for us to put together um, so that we're able to go out and um, talk effectively to external and internal stakeholder groups. And the business plan is important because it integrates all of our functional plans. So the business plan will integrate our financial plans, our marketing plans, our staffing and operational plans. And so there's got to be a high degree of consistency and interaction between this document and those other plans of action that we have as a business. The business plan is critical because it really provides us with an overview of what our long and short term decision making is going to look like. And certainly over the first three years of operations should tell us a lot about how we expect the business to develop and grow as an organisation. So there's a really key imperative here that we're um, trying to use this document to communicate effectively what our future goals look like. And as I mentioned before, this document is a document that we're going to share with other people. It's not for us to just write and to stick in the bottom drawer somewhere and never come back and look at it again. It's actually a live document that we'll be using when we go out and talk to people, to stakeholders um, of the organisation. And so it's really important that when we put that plan together that it helps us in that consultation process. Plans really need to be clearly written. They need to have a clear statement um, of what the business is about, the business model, the opportunities and threats that are presented, the strengths and weaknesses and the strategies that we've actually developed. And anyone reading that plan should be able to get a really quick summary of what the organisation is trying to do. So what do we have in a business plan? Um, the scope of a business plan, the breadth of what it covers, um, really is determined by the audience. It's determined by who we're actually writing it for. And we should remember that, that any written document does have an audience. And a good author knows that the key to effective writing is to understand what will communicate well with those people. The sort of language and structure they use that will actually um, resonate with those people and will be uh, seen as being more meaningful by them. And so we really need to have in place a good plan of how we're actually going to communicate that effectively. And when we're putting together our business plan, it should um, consider a number of different perspectives. It should consider the perspective of the entrepreneur. Okay, So the entrepreneur is trying to grow and develop their organisation. And so it should um, really convey that sense of excitement, enthusiasm and creativity that the entrepreneur is actually trying to bring to the business. So it should be imbued with a bit of the passion of the entrepreneur. And look, that could be done by having the entrepreneur as the, the voice, the narrative that runs through the actual document itself. The business plan should certainly um, have a marketing perspective as well, because again, the purpose of that document is to market the business to potential investors, um, to market the business to potential suppliers, to market the business to potential distributors. And so you really need to make sure that document is punchy and effective at communicating or is it as a communication tool with potential stakeholder audiences. If you don't have a document that provides a clear narrative, again, people will just turn off your organisation and won't listen to what your message actually is. And of course, it's got to be written from an investor's perspective. 
Um, investors will have very clear things that they'll be looking to see. So they'll want to see copies of all the um, financial statements of the organisation and they want to have a really clear picture about what the organisation's um, future cash flows are going to actually look like. And again, the depth and the detail of the business plan really depends on a couple of key things. Um, so it depends on the size and scope of the proposed new venture. So how big is that new venture going to be? Um, and that will determine you know, how detailed the plan actually is. If you're just talking about doing a small pop-up venture for a couple of weeks, then you're probably not going to have a big detailed plan. Again, the plan size and scale will depend a lot about the, on the size of the market um, and the nature of competition within that marketplace. Okay, so again, the context and the audience is really dictating the way that we put that plan together. And the business plan will also be determined by the potential growth that we're trying to achieve. Um, you know, if an organisation is serious about taking off and becoming maybe even a unicorn, you know, a billion dollar business from day one, then we need to have um, clear statements in there about the potential growth opportunities. And the business plan itself needs to be able to facilitate and communicate that growth potential. So the business plan is really valued because it helps us to determine the viability of the um, business venture within a defined market. And so again, anyone reading it can get a sense of, yeah, look, this looks like a good prospect or doesn't look like a good prospect of the organisation. Um, it guides the entrepreneur in organising and planning their activities. So again, it's a document that we can come back to and use um, to help us gauge where we're at a particular point in time and make decisions about where we need to go in the future. And again, it's certainly a very important tool in helping us to gain access to finance. So how do potential lenders and investment evaluate the business plan? Um, when they're looking at a plan, they're looking for a few key things. So the business plan really needs to reflect the strength of the management and personnel within the organisation. At the end of the day, when they make an investment decision about a business, they're investing in people and they want to know the people they're investing in have the knowledge, skills and ability required to grow and develop this particular organisational type. So they want to see a bit about the employment history of those people, that they've got skills relevant to that particular industry, that they know a bit about that industry and have actually spent time understanding how that industry functions. The business plan would need to have a really good outline of what the products are, okay, what is it we're trying to sell, the services we provide, and also to a degree the business model, the way that we're going to create and capture value with the customer. And of course, if any business plan would make a very clear statement about the available resources um, and the resources that will be need to deliver on our objectives. Resource allocation, allocation again, is one of the um, key issues that entrepreneurs have to grapple with and deal with um, on a daily basis. And so the plan really does help them talk to people about the way they're going to access and use resources. And for lenders, um, lenders are very much interested in the ability of the organisation to pay back its debts. Um, how long are they actually going to be able to, how long will they take? Um, are they going to be able to be in a positive cash position where they're going to be able to service this debt? And any creditor will look at um, four C's when they make an assessment about a, a business plan. The character of the individuals, you know, so are they people of good standing? Are they people who um, have skin in the game and have a reputation for success in this industry? They're gonna look at cash flow. Um, they're gonna look at, you know, what's the cash flow look like in the future? They're gonna talk about collateral um, and they're also gonna talk about equity contributions. You know, what are their own money and time are the owners of this business putting on the table. Now, there's lots of different models of business plans out there and I'm not advocating for this structure necessarily over any other. All I'm trying to do here is to highlight for you some of the key elements you'd expect to see in any business plan. Um, but yeah, if you look across resources, what you'll see is that there's often um, a number of different resources out there that you might use. So a business plan would usually start off with an executive summary, and the executive summary does give people a really quick snapshot of what the main points of the organisation are. Now while an executive summary is only short, um, it really does play a very critical role in communicating punchy, key information to investors, and it's like the hook. If your executive summary is good, then people are going to um, invest in your organisation, or certainly invest in the time in reading the rest of the business plan. Um, unfortunately, 
Um, people just see the executive summary as just a summary that they just sort of put some bullet points down and don't really provide enough meat for a potential reviewer to actually get into. Usually at the start of the business plan, we do a bit of a context analysis. So look at the environment, look at the industry, look at the organisation and talk about what it is that um, we are able to bring to the table to solve the problem. And out of that, you'd have a clear statement about um, what the opportunity is. You'd then have some sort of description of the venture, the business itself, or in particular, the business model that you're going to use, because any investor is going to want to know, well, how are you going to solve the problem? Yes, you've established there's an issue, but how are you actually going to go about solving that problem? The business plan would also contain in it things like the production plan or the operational plans that sometimes referred to, the marketing, um, organisational and financial plans. So these sub plans are designed to give the reader a bit of an overview about what are the marketing strategies we're going to use and how would the business be organised and what are our resources look like. What's our production process and how are we going to manage the production process and overall what are our financials look like as a business. And then towards the end of the report, we'd have an assessment of risks. You know, every business, is, um, every business decision comes with risks and certainly entrepreneurial business decisions where you're opening up new markets or new opportunities have higher levels of risk. And so any investor is going to know what the, want to know what the risks are, but they're going to then try and marry that up against the return. So they'll look at the risks against the financial plans and say, is the risk of investing in this business worth the return on investment? And then finally, your business plan needs to have a bit of an outline about the control and evaluation processes that you're going to use to ensure that the business achieves its objectives. So that's just a very quick overview of business plans. Um, what I'm going to do now is go on and just quickly say a few words about the concept of business models.